So before proceeding with this tutorial's lesson, I just want to mention a mistake I made in the last video. So the last video, we created this collection of objects and turned into a prefab, the one specifically that has the pit. The problem is, is we only grabbed the uh, blocks. There's also a collider that needs to be in there too. So when you create this, make sure that the pit collider has been copied and put into it as well. So if you've already made this, what you do, is you would take this, drag it back into the system, as uh, the scene, excuse me, copy the pit, line it up with that, with the, the missing block, and then drag the uh, uh, collection back into the asset, turning it into a new prefab. You would delete the old prefab, and then the last step is you need to reattach the new prefab here, seen as that you've deleted the old one. So if you haven't done this already, you know to add the pit. But if you've already done this, drag it into the scene, add a copy of the pit collider, drag it back into the asset area, turning it into prefab, delete the old one, and reattach the new one. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to build on this idea of prefabs and instantiation. So what we're going to do is we're going to take one of our obstacles and we're just going to drag and drop it into the asset area, making it a prefab. Now this is much easier than these because we had to collect these together and then drag them. This is just a one-off. Same thing we can do without the power-ups. So let's take the capsule drag and drop it and put that into the asset area as well and the capsule already has uh, the particle system attached so um, that one's already set up now oh and by the way see this uh, textures folder we're going to get to that in a uh, another video um, has no impact on this one though so don't worry about that now we can also take the coin so Going to take that, drag and drop that into the um, asset area. So now we've turned all our obstacles and our power ups and our collectibles all into prefabs. So let's go into the GM script now. And we're going to create variables for those prefabs which allow us to then instantiate them. So so public transform coin obj public transform obstacle obj public transform capsule obj before we go any further let's save this and when we go to the gm object you'll see those new variables there and now it's just a matter of dragging, dragging and dropping them so capsule to capsule obstacle to obstacle coin to coin. Now since we already have this routine here that builds the world, okay, we might as well just utilize that and expand on that to do the randomization as well. So, one more variable. Public int rand number So with every pass, because this keeps happening as long as this is true and that it's that that this variable is less than that amount. So random number equals random dot range zero comma ten. And the range is completely arbitrary, it all depends how many uh, uh 
how many different things you need to instantiate, the likelihood of instantiation. Because say you have, um, this is 12 numbers, okay? Excuse me, 11 numbers, um, 0 through 10. So 1 through 10 plus 0, so 11 numbers. So you might want something to happen more often than something else. So maybe you're going to have something happen if it's 5 or less, okay, which would be 6 numbers. Maybe you want something to happen only if it's the number 7. Something happen between and if the numbers are between 7 and 8. So in other words, you can create a greater range of, um, of, of chances for something to happen. So you don't necessarily want this to be one-to-one, -one, like, okay, I've got 10 objects, so I, got, I need to create a 10 range. Certain things you want, might want to happen with a greater um, occurrence. So that way you can create this kind of weighted average. So, now we just put in a series of if statements. If random number is, say, less than 3, then we want something to happen. I'm going to use an instantiation. So, instantiate, and again, it's what's being instantiated, where it's being instantiated, and the rotation. This one we'll say will be the coin object and it will be at new vector 3 and really what we're since the z coordinate has already been determined because that's what this is and we need to always put this at a certain height at least for this object so it needs to be above this since this is the platform level the one thing that we're really changing is this the three columns negative one positive one and zero so let's do negative 1, comma, 3.17F. It's like I said, it has to be above that one. And it is the Z scene POS. So that's where it's being instantiated. And then you're using coin OBJ's rotation. So if the number is 0, 1, or 2, it gets in, the coin gets instantiated there. If the number is, say, greater than 7, it'll get instantiated, say, all the way to the right, positive 1. Now, you could also do sum for 0, the middle. I'm not going to do all the different uh, permutations, but you can just build this up as much as you want. And we'll do a couple more. So if random number equals equals, let's say four, then we'll say the obstacle object will be instantiated at one and the obstacle object's rotation. So again, these you don't change because the Z is already being determined and we need the vertical to be the same. So unless you're adding like a jump ability and you want something that has to be jumped at, that would be a later tutorial. And we'll do one more. So if it's equal to say 5, then I should have copied this one. Okay, so we've got this showing up at 1, so maybe this one would show up at 0. And we'll stop there, as far as at least adding if statements, because like I said, you can make many, many different combinations. The key here is that um, you never have two different things that can happen with the same number. That way you never have to worry about a coin being on top of an obstacle, um, because uh, you have, um, you've set it up so that they never happen at the same number. So it's okay to have two different things happen at the negative one, well, let's use positive one. It's okay to have two different things happen at the positive one location, but because it's a different random number, they'll never happen at the same time. The only time you'd want that to happen is say you want a coin above an obstacle because again, you might be able to jump over it. That's an entirely different tutorial though. There is one additional change you have to make though in the move orb script. Now, for the collisions with the obstacles, that's fine. Obstacles are based on tag. 
So um, in the move orb script, uh, if the game object tag is lethal, uh, all the obstacle collisions will work. The problem are the ones that are based on name. And the reason for that is when an object is instantiated, okay, so it's a prefab and gets instantiated, what gets instantiated, its name is not the name of the prefab. It is the name of the prefab with the word clone in parentheses appended to it. And so we're going to have to do the same thing with coin. And eventually with anything else that gets instantiated. So right now, um, the ramp colliders are not get instantiated um, or the exits uh, if they get instantiated then we'll have to make the modification too though but that's an important point to know is that when an object get instantiated it gets that appended to it the other workaround is you could attach a script to each object that removes that but that you start creating a lot of scripts if you do that so it's easy enough just to adjust it here So the instantiation is working because I can see them up there. But they're not rotating though. So I pick and Okay. The reason why the first one didn't pick up is because I eliminated the one where it just said um it's no longer checking for a coin, it's checking for um coin um clone. So that's why this one broke, but that's fine. We could just delete that one now that we have a prefab. But what I did notice is that they were not rotating. So again, I suspect that's just the naming issue. So if we go to the coin and see if effects is open, it's not. So yeah, see coin. So again, functionality was being based on object name. Same thing for here. Now it may turn out that you don't want, and that was not rotating. Oh, I know why, because that's not instantiated. So let's just delete that one. And we don't have to put it right back. It doesn't do anything at the moment anyways. Again, we're just kind of carving out uh, functionality so that we could apply a power up later. And there we go, so everything's rotating. See, like you got a coin in the middle here. And just depending on how much variety you want depends on um, the, the amount of choices, the amount of if statements you're going to put in there. So that should do it for now. I think that takes care of this lesson. So you have now uh, been able to add randomization to your levels. If you want to take that approach, you may not. You may want it tightly choreographed. You're still going to want to do the instantiation even for the choreographed levels uh, because you don't want to have that all sitting on your screen all at once. Um, but now at least you can instantiate. So that should do it for uh, this one.